Welcome to another edition of the SpringCarUnlimited.com podcast presented by Wicked Energy Gum, a fast-acting alternative to energy drinks, five times faster without filling up on liquids. I'm Jeremy Elliott, joined by Ryan Hand. Ryan, I got my name right. We did another take, yeah, and I, was, I couldn't even get my name right. It was a little bit better that time, <laughs> I got to admit. And Bill said we got a smile. You haven't been getting much right anyway, so I don't expect your name to be right. <laughs> Ah, we already took the first yeah, shot first with the shot. picks. We are. You had a good week. I'll tell you what. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of shots probably this week. I'm I'm going to start the show off by saying I'm one for 28 <laughs> as far as picking winners. Yeah. Thank you, Joe Von Schultz, for pointing that little gem out to yep. me. And you're oh, seven for 28. You're batting 25% in those 28 good. races. That's pretty good. But you're still not that far ahead of me in positions. And in top fives, you're only two. Top tens, only two. So if you I look th- at, I like the way you look at the positive. That's good. That's good. I, I gotta, Don't tell anybody how many wins you're behind. I think it's six. Yeah, I think it is six. Yeah. It doesn't matter though. If I win the other three categories, <laughs> that's two. That's two dinners. That's fine. Okay. I'm good. All right. We got a, <laughs> a jam packed show to say the least. A we lot have of three. Stuff. Yeah, we have three guests this week. We're going to start off with Dominic Selzy, Kevin Swindell. Uh, in segment three and then freddie raymer to talk about central pennsylvania speed week which starts this friday uh we're going to take a look back at last week's action ohio speed week what a just quagmire of rain cancellations moving races here and there i wouldn't have wanted to organize ohio speed week last week well you just wait till like the day of the race and then you figure out where you're going to go wherever it's not raining yeah and credit to the fans oh when they switched to Wayne County on no. on the Wednesday, it was a home run. Credit to the promoter who had like the balls to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wouldn't have done that. Shoo, man! No, it was a it was a great turnout. I'm glad that worked out. Yeah. Now we have to ask ourselves: Is that something we do here? We have Speed Week coming up. We have nine straight nights. The oh, it's not going to rain. <laughs> it's going to be hot. It'll it's, be yeah. It's last already, year it was too hot to rain. <laughs> it's funny. The the heat's already ramping up. It, it is ninety two degrees today. Yeah, it's like it knows speed weeks like Friday. It's just yeah. Well, it it could have held off for for a, few for more. a week. Yeah, yeah, but then you would have had rain. So just be happy. Okay, I can't win. So Ohio Speed Week. Dale Blaney finishes second, first, seventh, and third. Wins his sixth Speed Week title, and he takes the All Star point lead from Aaron Reitzel. That's something I don't think either of us thought would happen i thought dale as we talked about last week would be better than what people thought but i didn't expect him to take the all-star point lead at any point throughout the season he's back in his in his home in his wheelhouse what makes him comfortable and he's confident and he's rolling he is rolling and consistent timing decent yeah because you don't you don't need to be you don't need to be head and shoulders above everybody in no. time trials i mean if you are that's fine, but some nights that comes back to bite you if you go out late and you're really right. fast. You end up fifth quick overall, which doesn't do anything for you, and then you start fourth in your heat, which doesn't do anything for you, and you got to run first or second. So, um, no, Dale's been hitting it good. He has, and again, it, it, how does – and that becomes a storyline which we'll talk about in our fifth and final segment this week because they head to Illinois now. Mm-hmm. Now, first off, they got to get races in. Yeah, <laughs> because that's been a problem. So I, I don't, you know, but Aaron Reitzel will go jump in with him. He struggled. Your boy who you pick, that's the only reason I'm close to you. Uh, yeah. In positions. yeah, if he would have done his normal. I, I think we say he's struggling. He's still fast. He's still got speed. Right. He just got tangled up in a couple problems that maybe were some of his doings, some of other guys doings but in the end when you you know it it takes you out of a heat race or whatever out of the dash and then you got to come from the back run the b main actually i think he had trouble one night in the b main even yeah he did he he won wednesday at the rescheduled wayne county show yeah and you thought killed him there uh, yeah you you think okay he's back on pay you know back on track and then he comes back wayne county again and he has an incident in the heat, an incident in the B. He had to take a provisional and ended up 15. Yeah. So that allowed Dale to catapult around him. And uh, look, it's going to shake out. Yeah. I, th- I no, still I think. Yeah, I think he's still. T- he had nine wins last year. Yeah, he's still going to get his wins because he's still fast. It's yeah, he's a, fast at the beginning of the night. And too. I think this is why they ran the All-Stars, to try to figure out how to minimize mistakes. And, and it, you know, it reared its head twice in one night. So 
you know, we'll see what they come up with starting off next week. And, you know, I'm I'm happy to talk about the next part of Ohio Speed Week. Buddy Kofoid. Yes. Uh, he took the finale at Wayne County, won $10,000, but it's how he did it. He was 1.4 seconds behind the leader with like five to go. He did it on the gas. <laughs> he was <laughs> he was he was wheeling it yeah. around the top. Yes. Gets a last lap pass on Parker Price Miller to take the win. He ended up third in speed week points, missing an A main. Yeah, no, he's He's good. He's That's pretty it. much what you've advertised so far, it looks like. He doesn't have quite as many wins as you'd like to have him yet, but he did have some bad luck earlier in the year. So Yeah, he should have two, three more wins. And he's probably just starting to get comfortable with a lot of the tracks right. he's on. And I know you said it doesn't, you know, he doesn't look at it, it by track. Matter. But you know what? There's still something to be said about racing tracks multiple times. You'll, you will get better at them. Incidentally, I think he's finished 13 A mains, all of them top 10s. That's pretty good. So that's why I kind of say the track doesn't matter to him. Yeah. And I think you're going to see a lot more wins from Buddy Kofoid the rest of the year. Uh, things get back to normal. I expect him to run Attica this week and do the normal Ohio thing. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting. Like, does he go to Knoxville? Uh, I think he's scheduled to run the Kings Royal week. I'm interested to see, you know, we talked last week about Aaron Reitzel running the Brad Doty classic because he's so good there at, at Attica. Mm -hmm. Buddy Kofoid's also good there. Absolutely. So I'll be anxious to see how, how he performs. One of the kind of black marks on Ohio Speed Week is obviously Atomic Speedway and what happened there on thir on Friday night Yeah, with Brent Marvel went through the fence, around the fence, but the, the, the he kind of, he kind of went up on the, on the, concrete yeah, and, and then kind of flipped and uh, there wasn't a whole lot of top of the catch fence there and right. he kind of catapulted through it and. Almost in the stands. It was almost honestly. Oh, he was in the stands. A guy got hurt, went to yeah. the hospital, and they canceled the rest of the program. There were several flips before them, before Brenton's. And we're going to talk a lot about this in this show with Dominic Selzy in segment two because he had some pretty strong comments f for Stockton. Well, it's not, And we're not going to focus so much on the tracks themselves, but overall – tracks and uh kevin swindell is obviously going to talk about safety a lot freddie raymer obviously central pennsylvania speed week you're on the sprint car council mm -hmm. so it's good to have you here as always but we're going to hit on atomic and some of the things that happen and it, it should also be also be noted rob hunter's nice gesture yeah to have maxim send brent marvel a car yeah and it just goes to show you what kind of guy rob hunter is it's pretty cool it's the positive side of this this whole thing and uh, obviously britain not getting hurt uh, the fan was hurt but i actually did see it fate maybe it was on facebook or something he said his back was broken and yeah spots or something but it's not life-threatening right no he was actually right. they said he was walking around his room or something yeah you know say so and he and he still loves racing he had a sign you know race dirt racing forever so yeah and that's the positive side yeah. of this but i i think you and i would agree that some stuff needs to change and Absolutely. i'm not picking on atomic or any other track no, it specific. can happen it can happen anywhere can happen anywhere yeah. uh, but we'll get into that in segment two and three brad sweet i think i mean we're ready to say brad sweet is oh, title no. contender now you're ready to give it up uh, i'm not you're giving ready. it up but <laughs> brad to... sweet wins at beaver dam he has won three of the last four outlaw races. He is now 54 points over Donnie Schatz. And it should be noted, Donnie Schatz has not finished in the top three or on the podium in his last six World of Outlaw starts. Oh, my God. This the might sky, be the... Oh, the no, sky come is on. falling in. Is, this has to be the biggest slump for him that you've seen, that he's not would, in the top three in six yeah, straight races. I would say normally you get something in his wheelhouse. Well, he, he kind of struggled in his wheelhouse, which is North Dakota right. and South Dakota, anywhere up by his, his, his homeland there is usually a strong suit, but obviously he struggled. Yeah. So keep your eye on the world of owls. They got rained out on Sunday. So, which is no shock, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe God doesn't want you to race Sunday. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, Robbie price is first Canadian to win the dirt cup out at Skagit speedway. He's 21 years old. Wow. It's a pretty, it was intense. Right? Justin Sanders came through the B and came up to like 10th, bailed me out. 
Yeah, because like, I, I had I seen Hafertief was I think I picked him and he was starting ninth and I'm like, okay, Justin's in the B, so I had to be I had to be pretty good tonight. But then it didn't seem like no there wasn't a whole lot of movement. No, except for Justin. Yeah, Justin. Yeah, but good race, good event. They go to, and they run the the Brownfield Classic this week at Grace Harbor. Oh, okay. ASCS stays in the Northwest, so should be an interesting show. Danny Dietrich. It seems like we can't. I mean, he picks every one week. off once a week. Yeah, I mean, he's up to ten wins. He's up to double digits. We said a, a couple weeks ago. Hey, is this guy win twenty? Why wouldn't he? Honestly, I think the biggest shock of the weekend for me was that he he didn't win Lincoln. He didn't. The win, yeah, and he's <laughs> he, he didn't Honestly. win. Honestly, and like uh, it's, it's not a shock when he wins. Right now, it's a shock right. when he kind of doesn't win from from right there. Yeah, Fred Freddie Raymer got him at Lincoln, which we'll talk to Freddie mm-hmm. about that because Freddie has six wins. Danny Dietrich has. 10 brad sweet is six those are your top three in the country mm-hmm. so actually freddie looked really really good at lincoln right he was operating i mean to beat danny right now you got to be operating you got to be good yeah I mean, it's plain and simple davy frantic good weekend for the new jersey 360 driver people wonder why he's not running sealants grove well he's trying to double up and run this patriot sprint tour empire super sprint tour and maybe try and bag both titles it's going to be hard to do. They have like two or three races that overlap. But he wins at Land of Legends on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Comes back Sunday at ESS race and wins the Cold Cup at Utica, Rome. That's a $7,000 weekend. That's not bad for a 360 driver. That was 50 laps, too. Oh. Cold Cup. Wow. 50 laps. That's a lot of dust in New York. <laughs> the- <laughs> <laughs> wow so the christmas card isn't coming from new york to you <laughs> probably not but you are correct <clears throat> sealens grove speedway kramer cup ryan smith kind of invades starts on mm-hmm. the knob dominates the race it's two 360 wins when does he win a 410 race does it happen during speed week hold the answer until our last segment all right something for you to think about I don't know. Uh, teams, I think, struggle. They're not. They're struggling to get in the top five now. Bill Mil- Bill McIntyre just told me he thinks Ryan Smith's going to win Speed Week. You know, the, the time trial stuff is in his wheelhouse because he time trials well. Right. So we'll get rid of some of these uh, regular point shows and see what he see what he does with time trials. Well, it should be interesting. He'll definitely be one of the storylines of Speed Week. Some other quick four ten results. Dominic Selzy wins at Ocean Speedway. The the Pombo Sergeant. Sean Watts gets his first KWS win the next night at Stockton. So uh shout out to Sean Watts. River City's Jade Hastings gets another one. He has two this year. Mm-hmm. And then Port Royal, Jeff Miller, 305. He's got two. Yeah, he's got two. Former 305 driver, rookie season. He's got to be the front runner for national 410 rookie of the year. He's got a heck of a chance. And the funny part is he's only running one one night a week. One night a week. But all you need. he's definitely put his name in the hat with, uh, honestly, Saturday I watched uh, the highlights and I was like, man, he his car is really good and he did a really good job with it. Now, I was told that Logan Wagner didn't realize that he was running second. He thought he when he passed Lucas, that was for the lead. Yeah. And apparently maybe he didn't go as hard as he thought he could have. But, you know, we, it, it is what it is. You, Jeff you know Miller, what? Jeff Miller got to the checkered floor first. You better start realizing that Jeff Miller isn't a lap car. No. Plain and simple. So th- other 360 results, Dirk Cup prelims was were Blake Hahn and Roger Crockett, Great Lakes, Greg Dahlman, and Jared Horseman. Jared Horseman wins a lot mm-hmm. in that region. Trailway, Steve Kaismore gets his first win. Bill McIntyre covered the event for us. We had Trailway story on springcarlimit.com. Just, nice. Just That's Bill's sh- favorite. That is. Williams Grove 358's Doug Hammaker gets the win. URC Chad Layton at Big Diamond. Placerville Shane Hopkins. That's going to wrap up segment one. SprintCarUnlimited.com podcast presented by Wicked Energy Gum. We'll be back in segment two with Dominic Selzy. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to segment two, SprintCarUnlimited.com podcast presented by Wicked Energy Gum. Joining us on the phone is Dominic Selzy, who won last week at Ocean Speedway with Pombo Sargent and also finished in the top five the next night at Stockton. But he had some strong words uh, for, I guess, the promoter at Stockton when they interviewed him. Dom, how you doing? I'm doing great, guys. How are you? Are you at Applebee's? That's what we want to know. Boy, I wish I was. I'm telling you what, I'm, I'm missing that two for 20 right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> why am i not surprised <laughs> so so dominic obviously uh you were pretty fired up on on saturday night what what happened and what did you what words did you have to say well you know we, we went to stockton there for the king of the west race and um you know right there in hot laps we knew that it was going to be an issue it wanted to chunked out pretty good probably about six to eight inches deep you know to where basically the, all the clay was gone. It was down to the to the base dirt. And, um, you know, we, we had kind of a couple of the drivers had talked, and I, we had, I know we had talked to, you know, people with King of the West hoping, hey, can we just work on the top? Obviously, the bottom's chunked out. There's really not much anyone to do with that. Well, you know, like I said, I don't know if it's full, um, you know, full power with the King of the West or not, whatever the deal is, but they, the guys at Stockton went out there, they ripped the bottom, watered the hell out of the bottom, and, uh, you know, at that point, now we're just going wide open over uh, motocross tracks. I mean, there's a jump into three. There's holes all through one and two. Um, just, I mean, insanely rough, insanely rough. And uh, we, we run the heat races. It's rough. We run the dash. It's rough, but it's starting to kind of slick it off a little bit, so we're at least slowing down a little bit. And uh, what do we do for the feature? We water it. We rip it again. Uh, we do a, probably a 20-minute hot lap session before the feature. They red flag it, let us fill up and put tear-offs back on. And now we've got a wide open racetrack through holes again. And obviously, you were none too pleased about any of this. I was none too pleased about any of it. it generally speaking, 